Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we again have Brooke Chalmer, who is the Senior Manager of Product Marketing at SonicWall. So if you've watched our previous SonicWall IT Jams, you'll know who they are. But if you haven't, SonicWall is a global cybersecurity company specializing in firewall, network security, cloud security, and more. Um, so welcome back to the jam, Brooke. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Great. So um, today we're going to be talking about your run-in with a um, Russian ransomware cell. So to start off, um, so it was last year you met with a cyber attack from a Russian um, ransomware cell. So yeah, could you just talk a bit on that? Give me a brief over overview and what you, the key things you learned um, firsthand with that. Yeah, and it's been a year now, to be honest. It's been just about a year since I first made contact and it started off with me finding an article about this crew and, and tweeting about it. And then within hours, they retweeted me. And I thought, what do you do if, with the, I mean, you say game on or, you know, let's go. And because you're, you're fighting with hackers every single day. And I took a minute to stop and say, well, can I talk with you? I want to understand you. And they, believe it or not, agreed to it. And uh, it's been a year of, of chatting with them and understanding how this crew works. Uh, there's a lot of things I can't say or the number of people involved. But nonetheless, uh, I've, I've been able to get in contact with this uh, ransomware cell for about a year now. So in there, I got a chance to really see the human side of it and see how much pain and anger is behind the scenes here and how they really love to go out there and try to even the score or get back in retribution for uh, what they think are, are abuses of their people and their, their, their countrymen and a way to try to level, level things and bring revenue into uh, Russia, et cetera. And so I got a chance to see a mixture of what's, what happens when you're influenced by former Soviet and current Russian propaganda when you're young, Generation Z type hackers, think that, uh, in combination with um, a love for, the, for American and British TV shows. Um, and, and you kind of get this interesting psychological profile of the attackers who are after you, especially this new wave of Russian hackers that are coming out in the scene now that are not nation state sponsored. Hmm. So the motivations were, did you, were you surprised that, that the motivations for what they were doing weren't kind of what is normal? Yes. Um, yeah, because what you said before, the um, motivations didn't sound, yeah. It was very odd. And to be honest, you know, we have a lot of presuppositions in our head about what these attackers will be like. And if you not, if you opened a mystery door and on the other side of that door was going to be a, a malware author and an attacker, you would have come kind of a preloaded script in your mind and things you'd ask. And the first thing I asked was, are you doing this to support your family? And, and you're asking things about that, you know, why are you doing this and how are you doing this? And it took me two weeks to really write that first blog about the experience because I had to keep rebooting and getting rid of that script that's been in my head that comes from a mixture of, you know, marketing as well as just uh, presuppositions and what you know about people from reading news articles. So this was my first chance to really get hands on with someone who I knew was a verified malware author and attacker and coder and understand what this person was like or these people are like and ultimately why they wanted to do it. And, and a lot of it, if I go into it, it gets into a thousand years of religious and political history um, as to why the East and the West are at odds with each other. Uh, but fundamentally, it was just understanding these people and, and kind of rebooting everything I knew about attackers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and so obviously you do, you're employed by a cybersecurity company. Um, so do, did having this experience um, give you a better insight on how to mitigate ransomware? Yeah, and the, here's the fun thing is that, you know, obviously I attend a lot of tech conferences and I sit and I listen to a lot of new technology. I, I, I read the analyst papers. You know, I'm, I'm in this world, right? And every single, you know, week I hear a new announcement, new development, and we keep looking to this cutting edge, bleeding edge technology to try to mitigate attacks and keep our networks and our data safe. But when you sit down and listen to these people, you realize that 99% of everything they're doing can be stopped with basic hygiene and technology that's been around for five, 10 years in most cases. Uh, for, for a lot of times the, the biggest weakness they have 
are the actually the IT administrators who are not following the rules and uh, setting up weak passwords and not patching vulnerabilities on their own devices. Mm. Um, and related to that, how could um, organizations use that um, or the knowledge that you have um, to better their cybersecurity um, landscape? Yeah, and, and that was interesting because this crew, I actually, after talking with them, maybe well over into a week of this conversation, I said, what advice do you have for us to protect ourselves from you? Are you willing to share that? And they did. And they, they gave a lot of interesting points. And you know, the, the first one they said was use real passwords, uh, you know, censoring some of the language they use, but use real passwords. And it was, it started off with hygiene, then it went down into, you know, not protecting non-centered ports and doing a lot of different things. But ultimately, you know, people can read up on that and the things that I wrote about what they said, but in reality, it's a lot of it's just basic hygiene and enforcing the, the people who are enforcing the rules need to follow it as well. And, you know, for example, your IT admin will say, you need to use a multi-digit character password, you know, nine characters long with special characters. Wherefore, he's finding a lot of these IT admins are just, you know, lazily using old scripts, old things, old uh, programs with vulnerabilities. Uh, he said the, his favorite password he ever cracked was literally two quotation marks. That was it. So we have to practice what we preach and you know, we keep things up to date, patch, and then use proper passwords in a majority of what we're saying. Then of course, obviously we need to be using the right technology to, to look for threats that we know about using you know, static type and you know, engines and, and technology like firewalls to scrub out what we know to be wrong which we found you know, can solve 96 to 99% of all attacks. Wherefore, in terms of using uh, heuristics based, you know, you know, sandboxing type engines and technologies like real time deep memory inspection and capture ATP here at SonicWall, um, that's only taking about that one, 2%. But again, that one, 2% is very valuable. Um, that really gets you know, rid of those targeted attacks that are namely targeted at state, local and provincial governments across the world. So by leveraging that knowledge and that type of technology, which again, has been around for quite some time, um, we can mitigate a lot of these attacks. Right, perfect. Well, um, that concludes 10, uh, today's 10 minute IT jam with Sonic Wall Senior Manager of Product Marketing, Brooke Chalmer. Thank you so much for joining us again, Brooke. Yeah, stay tuned, thank you.